what miracle were they looking for? They saw dangerous dimensions of God. But at the slightest opportunity, they bowed to bow. They committed adultery with Ashtaroth. You are seeing here. Do you also want to go away? It's like saying, go now because other things are coming up. Do you also want to go away? But look at their response. This is the thing I like about scripture. Next verse. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Alabata alabaya. He says, you, you are the one that have the words of what? These two, these responses from Peter, eh, encapsulate the problem with the, the 21st century church. One, the church has not realized that they don't have options. That outside Jesus, regardless of how hard the things Jesus teaches, outside Jesus, the Christian does not have options. You, 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 may, you may try to, to say, eh, eh, it's not like that. It's not like that. We are contemporary. This, 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 we, we have evolved. We have evolved. Outside of Jesus and what he demands of your life, every other thing is an abomination. Peter, you see, this answer from Peter is not Jesus that put it in Peter's mouth. Peter had come to a place in his engagement with the Lord and he realized, I don't have options. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Remember the people that are speaking are disciples. These are people that are being trained, being made, being taught. Peter realized that this is the only place for me. You know the reason your Christian life is not deep with God is that there are many voices that are speaking into your life. Do you know that Satan is also discipling people? There's something called satanic discipleship. And it's Jesus that told us how disciples are, are generated. He said, you make them. How do you make them? Through teaching. So the world teaches. When you see a concert and everywhere is sold out and the person who is doing the concert is half naked, it's a teaching. So young girls, even in church, they are, they are, they are fashion mentor. is a daughter of Moab. is a daughter of Sodom. I laugh at Christians. The people you take marriage advice, financial advice, and all kinds of things from are, are people who they have sold their soul to Satan. So you go on Twitter, somebody that is half naked and, and looks like, like a, a, a local hookup champion. Christians are her followers. They say, I'm learning cooking. Cooking from somebody who, is, who has pledged her soul to Satan. Cooking. We have too many options. We have not come to the same place Peter came where you've told yourself that I don't have anywhere else to go. I don't want what the world is teaching. I don't want what the world is selling. I don't want the options the world is offering. Second thing is, the present day church does not think in eternal terms. We are obsessed. We are obsessed with time and present reality. The sense of eternity has eluded us in this generation. And you see, oh my God, Jesus help me. All you need to do is study church history. One of the things that made the apostles and the apostolic fathers very powerful was that they consistently put eternity in view. You read Fox's book of Matthias, 
you read about people who are dying for Jesus. You know why they can die for Jesus. They have settled it in their heart that this world is a transition. So you hear somebody like Paul say, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Eternity. I need to say to you tonight that if you do not think in eternal terms, it's only a matter of time, you will be plagued with compromise. It's just time. If you have not conditioned yourself to think with eternity in view, because once your thinking is in that direction, your living will be in that direction. The reason many Christians are falling, making mistakes, they are obsessed with this present world. Obsessed with this present reality. Obsessed with time. They don't think in eternity. This thing that Peter said, it looks very easy. Can you imagine Jesus just asks him, do you want to live also? It's not something he began to think about. This thing came to him. Peter was a fantastic disciple. He had his weaknesses, his flaws, but he was a fantastic disciple. It means that Peter was a, such a disciple that he, he thought things through carefully. It's not something that he just imagined now. It's something he had been thinking about. Every time he hears Jesus say something hard, he will say, Kai, which kind of thing be this? He said, no, but this thing, it might be a bitter tablet, but it is for the health of my soul. So Peter, rather than he reject it, began to embrace it. He said, with you are the words of what? Eternal life. If I'm going to live beyond this realm, I must make your words my food. I want us to take one more. Let me find one more. Out of the mount of two or three witnesses. The Bible says a matter is established. Media. Where is that scripture again now? I'm trying to find it. Uh, I, I know it's in Luke. I think. Hate father and mother. Luke. Is it nine? It's 14. Yes, that's it. 14. Luke 14. Are you getting blessed tonight? Yes, sir. Luke 14. Luke 14, give us 26. God bless you. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be what? He is Jesus. Imagine sitting in a service and a man is telling you, the only way you can follow me is hate your father. Imagine you just married. Or that's the message he even preaches at your wedding ceremony. We are here to join the bride and the groom. But since we are all Christians, and you want to follow me, hate your wife. <laughs> Young people that are dreaming of wedding night. What's your wife here? I'll be me. After I don't wait, 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 I should hate my wife. Say, I love you, don't mind him. They hate his father, hate his mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. He cannot be my who preaches this kind of messages if you want to grow your church you don't preach this kind of things Jesus preached like he was driving people away a young man comes to meet him I think it's Mark 10 now he, the Bible calls him the rich young ruler comes to meet him say master what can I do that I might inherit eternal life I will follow you Wherever you go, oh my God, what a salvation experience. Anywhere you go, I will follow you. And Jesus said, uh. The Bible says Jesus looking at him, loved him. And he said, 
go sell all you have. He said, no, first of all, he said, go and follow the commandments. The guy said, I've been doing that since my birth. I've been born again for 15 years. When we pray, I ascend. In case you are not aware, Elijah used to visit me. Moses, I levitate. I go through walls. And Jesus said, okay. There's a problem. Go and sell all you have. What kind of... Why does Jesus like to make life hard like this? <laughs> Is it not better to just, just accept the guy? The guy has obeyed all the commandments. Some people cannot even obey half. And if he was lying, Jesus would have told him, you lie. Eh? So the guy was an accurate brother. Doesn't even look at sisters twice. Eh? So he doesn't covet his neighbor's property, does not covet his neighbor's wife, doesn't worship idols, doesn't lie, does not steal. When you say brother that is in alignment, he was a brother in alignment. The problem was not in the commandments. The problem was in what had captured his heart. He obeyed God, but he had a, an idol. No man could see it. And Jesus, the way the realm of the spirit is designed, God does not want to share you with anybody. Have you read Exodus 34? Exodus 34 verse... Give me 15. Give me 11. Okay. Follow me. Observe what I command you this day. Behold, I am driving out before you the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. 12. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be what? His name. 13. But you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and cut down their wooden images. 14. For you shall do what? No other God for the Lord whose name is what? Is a what? God does not want to share you. If there is anything in your life that you love more than God, Woe betide you the day you come to God and you say, I want to be serious with you. The day you make that declaration, you have got a covenant with God, he will fight that thing. As long as you want to be a mediocre, irresponsible, barren Christian, God will leave you the way you are. The day you now get serious and say, I want to love you, he will now come and say, this thing, this thing, I'm a jealous God. I can't share you with this thing. That thing might not even be as bad as sexual immorality. It might be sleep. It's not me that said it. God said his name is what? Jealous. <laughs> you know his name is good. That's the one you hear in church. His name is kind. Your name is, what song is that? You are kind. But how many of them you might have never sang? You are jealous, yeah. You are jealous, yeah. You are jealous. They will drive us from church. He said his name is what? Jealous. You know, jealous is different from envious. Envious has a taint of wickedness, witchcraft, and uh, demonic activity. Jealous simply means that I have a certain right of ownership and I am unwilling to share. So I am jealous over you. It has a positive taint to it. So the matter with that guy was a matter of worship. The young ruler. He had done everything right, but another God was commanding his worship. What was the God? Mammon. And you see, on the narrow way, it is God 
or nothing else. God does not share himself or share his own with another. You see, God does not even want to... What brought us here was that you should hate father and mother, right? He doesn't even want to share you with your wife. If God knows that you love your husband more than him, he will fight that thing. You see, you, you will not like it, all, but it's true. <laughs> he will fight that thing. Until your love for your husband, your love for your children, your love for your job, your love for ministry, now becomes secondary to your love for him. If you don't get there, he will fight your other loves. He's a jealous God. He wants you in totality. You know why? If the man is not totally surrendered to God, he can end up like Judas. It means that there are still parts of his life that Satan can gain a foothold. So God is not doing that thing because he's selfish and wicked. He's doing that thing because he loves you. He wants to preserve the integrity of your space. So you are beyond reproach. You are beyond invasion. You are beyond compromise. Satan can't break your walls. Once God totally owns you, it becomes difficult for Satan to find a place in your, he can't use your job to control you. He cannot use your, your appetites to control you because your love for anything is secondary to your love for him. So there's no foothold for Satan. So we can go on and on and on. If any man will be my disciple. This is what Jesus said. He said, let him deny himself take up his cross and do what Jesus never 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 and I've studied Jesus a little in these years that I have followed Jesus never promised any man breakthrough as a consequence of following him never the time he responded in Jesus' teachings his teachings were such that Every time Jesus taught you, you left his presence feeling like, why do I have to give up something to follow this man? Every time. The only time Jesus responded in such a way as to bring comfort was when they came to him and asked and said, Oh God, we that have loved, left wives, left houses, left breakthrough to follow you, what is going to happen to us now? Then Jesus now gave them a word of comfort. He said, you have reward in this life and in the life to come a hundredfold. He never, in his teaching, directly promised you that the consequence of your following him will not cost you anything. Never. Go and read the early parts of John chapter 6. After he had worked miracles and fed them and done all kinds of things, they now started looking for him, looking for him everywhere, looking for him, looking for him. When they eventually found him, he said, you do not seek me because you saw miracles. He said, you seek me because you ate bread and now you are hungry. What? People have traveled. They went to a bus. He said, uh -uh, you've been looking for me. You tried though. He started wounding them, wounding, wounding. They look at you, you are fake. Do you know that's what he was saying? You are fake. You are not coming after me because it is your spirit that is crying. 